In this video, I'll tell you why you keep getting the same unhappy results in your hobby. There's a quote that has been thrown around for years and years and years. And some people say it's Einstein that said it. Some people say it's this person. I don't I have no idea who actually said it, but it may just be made up, which quotes can technically be made up, can't they? I think so. Anyway, this quote is this or something near it. The definition of madness is to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that is something that I think is very important for us to understand in our hobby. And, and, and I don't just mean in the painting and the building, for sure. I, that is certainly something. But also in the actual uh, gaming, the enjoyment of the gaming. Heck, it's even something that technically, you know, I'm doing right here uh, in the uh, wargaming hobby content creation aspect. I am coming from my living room instead of the studio uh, and just to see what that's like. And also, I really wasn't feeling like going into the studio today. The overall basis, though, of the idea is that change is very important when you want to get different results. And many people uh, just don't like the results that they get in the hobby. And very frequently, that causes people to leave the hobby, you know? I've been painting these Space Marines the same way this entire time, and I'm just not happy with the way they look. It must be a problem with me, and so therefore I leave the hobby. But what people, I think, don't realize is that it's actually very frequently about your process, and maybe you know, you're doing it in a way that isn't going to give you the results that you want, but if you keep doing it in that same way, you're not going to get any new results. The change is the important part. Now, admittedly, a few weeks ago in a video, I told you to not listen to people who are telling you you should be doing something in a different way, right? Now, doing something in a different way is not the same thing as change. Very frequently, and you know, if you haven't seen that video, pachow, uh, very frequently, people will tell you in a video specifically about wargaming, about how to paint your miniatures and all that kind of stuff, this is the proper way to edge highlight. This is the proper way to do washes. This is the proper way. And the point of that video, in a nutshell, was that the process that you use when you want to get things done is the right process for you. So if that's the case, then keep, and you're happy with the results, great. This is kind of the other side of that coin. Whereas you're like, I'm not happy with the results. I wish things looked a little differently than they, than they do. And uh, I don't know what I need to do to fix it. Well, uh, trial and error, but uh, is in the long and short of it, but really change, trying something different. That's the whole point. Now, also, there is some realm of practice that is important in miniature painting. You know, if you're trying to edge highlight and you're just not good at it and you have a lot, you have bad brush control and you're pushing up and down, which means that you're going to get fat, wide, you know, wide and then thin and wide and thin on your very fine edge highlighting and all that kind of stuff. As you keep doing more and more of it, you will find that you get better at it. So there is like, you know, practicing something is important, but it's really more important in the micro, right? So practicing edge highlighting, practicing blending, practicing glazing. These are all kind of you know, like micro techniques that add up to the overall kind of miniature, right? But if you are getting better at glazing, getting better at edge highlighting or anything like that, dry brushing, but you're still unhappy overall with the model, then there's something else that needs to change. And that's important for you to start looking at. Here's some examples from my hobby journey. I used to prime everything in black. Every miniature that I did, I primed in black. I still kind of do, but I'll get to that in a second. The idea behind priming everything in black is then that anything that you don't get paint on, anything in a nook and or a cranny that you don't get paint on becomes a shadow. If you prime a model completely in white, right, then what happens is, is that any nooks and crannies all of a sudden light up because there's white primer in the armpit or whatever. Whereas when you're painting over black, anything you miss is a shadow because it's darker. It makes sense with our eyes for the most part. People like things different ways, don't get me wrong, but that's the way that I was doing it. The problem was is to cover up all that black and all the, plot, the spots that weren't nooks and crannies. It took opaque paints, obviously, and a lot of people paint with opaque paints, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. And I know that sounded like I was throwing shade, but I'm, re I'm really not. Like it, Obviously, people can do amazing work working completely in opaque paints. I, however, didn't seem to be able to figure it out. Um, I would put down more and more opaque paint 
and layer after layer to build things up to cover up some of that black, all that kind of stuff. And I would get some real thick, chunky, uh, chalky as well, paint surfaces in places that I did not want, things that were supposed to be smooth metal, things that were supposed to be smooth skin, and they would look rough. And it just, it just, it was, it was making my paint, uh, my painting experience worse. And it was making the final product worse. And at that point, at some point I was watching a video and someone talked about Zenithal priming. And I've talked about Zenithal priming and Zenithal highlights quite a bit on this channel and also on my Twitch channel as well. That's the way I generally paint now. And what that is, is you're priming the model black, like I said, but then you're also spraying a lighter color, usually white over the top, but sometimes maybe black is not the base. Maybe dark brown is the base. And then there's like a tan that goes over the top. Or maybe you're going to go with dark brown for the base and then a couple different shades of red from above. All kinds of different possibilities. But what it's doing is two things. Number one is it's adding in built up, built in blends, especially with the highlighting, the the Zenithal highlighting, which is predominantly all colors as opposed to black and white, that really makes the, everything work real nice as far as like you don't have to get, you don't have to know how to blend as long as you can do it with a rattle can or an airbrush or even a dry brush. You can make it look like you know what you're doing more with blending and that helps. But the big trick to that is figuring out the use of transparent colors, washes, shades, glazes, eventually contrast colors and things like that from Games Workshop. When, when they released those paints initially, I was not impressed because I was thinking of doing it the way that they said, which was just put it over a real light color and put it on there and then there you go, one coat done. And a friend of mine actually was like, look, I put it over a Zenithal and it looks so much better. And he sent me some pictures and I was like, yeah, yeah, it does. And that's the way that I've been painting pretty much ever since, not just with contrasts, but also with speed paints and also with lots of other things and also using washes and glazes and all kinds of stuff. But that, that base has become the way that I do things. And it was because I took the time to change that my painting got better. It wasn't that if I kept practicing, I would get a better result. I would get a bit better, but it still wouldn't have been what I wanted, which was um, not only nice blends and things like that also, but speed, doing the blending Hand blending for me was going to take a real long time to do speedily. So, you know, this worked out quite well. And again, like I said, this is not completely all about just the actual building and painting and all that kind of stuff. The game portion of it is also important for you to take a look at as a overall hobbyist and understand if this is what you want to be doing. This type of game is your type of game. I exclusively played 40K in an earlier part of my. Uh, gaming career. I played 5th, I played 6th, I played 7th, and sometime in 7th I really started to get bogged down. Now a lot of people did. 7th was kind of a rough uh, overall addition, but for me it was just like, it. I just, I couldn't, I, I stopped playing. I stopped playing altogether. Not just like, oh I stopped playing 40k, I just stopped playing altogether. And that was not what I wanted, really, you know? but I didn't know what to do because it was the game, right? It's the game, right? Well, as it turns out, it's not the game. When 8th edition came out, things got better. I started to play a little bit more again, as did a lot of people, obviously. But I realized that it's still, even though a lot of people were talking about how great it was, it still wasn't quite what I was looking for, and it wasn't until I started playing skirmish games, admittedly games like Kill Team and Warcry, but spreading out into a whole bunch of different indie games as well that are you know, uh, games that are, are skirmish games, fewer models. It wasn't 40K's fault. It was the fact that I don't like playing army games. And 40K is an army game, so I started playing skirmish games, and that made things so much better in my hobby. But again, it was trying new things, going, look, this isn't working. You c I could have just kept forcing myself to play it. And I feel like sometimes there are people out there who are just forcing themselves to play 40K or Age of Sigmar or some other game, whatever it might be. Maybe it's chess, who knows? And they just, it's not the game for them, but it's the game that they play because of all their friends and that kind of stuff. But sometimes you've got to take the step and try to take the change to see if you're going to enjoy this other type of game a little bit more. If you want something you've never had before, then you have to do something you've never done before. That's the most important thing. You have to try and change things up and look for new processes, look for new techniques, look for new ways to look at color theory. Whatever the issue that you're having with your miniature you know, hobby, and again, could be gaming, could be just the, the painting and the whatever, could be both, honestly. Understanding what it is 
and then trying to make changes to make it work is the most important thing. And it's kind of hard because you don't just want to randomly just start changing things up. Sure. Again, like I said, practicing does help and it will help you to get better at the specific kind of micro things, the different techniques and stuff like that. But on the macro level, if you are getting better at edge highlighting and color theory, but you're still not happy with your output, there's got to be something else to it and you need to figure that out. So now how do you figure out what the change that you might want to make is going to be? There are admittedly zillions of videos out there on the internet and blogs and tweets and all kinds of things out there that you can look at and go, well, what should I try instead? Um, it's very hard to kind of like plow through all of that and say, well, I definitely am going to try. I'm going to make a list of 6,000 things and then mark them all off. I wouldn't go that route, most likely. Here's what I would tell you to do. I would tell you to talk to friends of yours who are in the hobby um, and ask them some questions. Understanding, and make sure that they understand this too, you are not guaranteeing you are going to take their advice. You are looking for feedback. You are looking for, hey, how do you do this? Hey, I'm having trouble with this. Start a conversation. Even if it's not friends you have in the hobby, maybe it's like, you know, friends that are like close by. Maybe it's people online. I mean, you could, you could go onto Reddit, I guess, and like go to, you know, r slash whatever and say, hey, well, you know, I'm having this problem and I don't like what this happens and, you know, or there's discords and all kinds of things. Look at the communities that are out there. Ask them. You have to set a filter in your head to just be like, okay, I have to be able to knock out a bunch of this because some of it's going to be whatever shenanigans. It's going to be people giving you bad advice. It's going to be people giving, but something in there could spark just like the Zenithal did thing did for me. I saw other people that started doing this. My friend sent me a picture and was like, hey, check this out with the contrast. And that's what kind of put me down this road. And that's, I think, an important thing to understand. But it takes a little bit of work, whether it's talking with friends of yours that you play with locally or whatever, or talking with communities online, finding that kind of stuff can help you kind of like weave through the chaff of the entire Internet uh, as far as wargaming is concerned and figure out what you're looking for. Understand that if you want to make change in your hobby, you can't just keep doing the same thing that you've been doing all this time. That way leads madness. I hope this video helps you with your hobby journey and getting happier with the overall output of your hobby progress. And also you, you get some games that you enjoy playing a little bit more as well. If, uh, if this did help and you liked it, click the like button down below. It really does help the channel. I appreciate it. And then also, if you're interested, subscribe as well if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.